What is up YouTube? Welcome to today's video. This is part two, the second in the series of Cuck My Rides. So today I've got Chris's Husqvarna Vitpilin 401, 401. And I've been riding it for about 100 kilometers today and so far I really like it. It's a great bike. So let's go and have a quick walk around the bike and then I'll get on to the actual riding with you. All right guys, so here is the Vitpilin 401. It is a great looking bike. For those of you who are in the know, it's essentially a KTM Duke 390 with a, a body kit, <laughs> to put it simply. But there are, are actually quite a few different, few different changes from the KTM to the Husqvarna. So first thing is engine. Engine is the same size. It's a 373cc single cylinder engine. But the Husqvarna is tuned a bit more for torque rather than top end power. And it feels absolutely, absolutely beautiful. It's a great engine. I can see why so many people use these for racing like the RC390. It's a brilliant engine. I absolutely love it. Considering I'm used to big, bigger bikes, I thought I wouldn't like it so much. But yeah, I actually have enjoyed every minute of riding it so far. So quick look at the brakes. So these brakes are called Bybri. Vibre. So I thought that was just some cheapo knockoff company, but I checked online and apparently that stands for by Brembo, apparently. So the suspension on this bike as well is good quality suspension. It's WP Apex front and rear. I found it to be a bit too soft. So the front, there's uh, no adjustability, which is kind of a problem for me because I'm 90 kilos and you know, 190 centimeters tall. So I could have done with a bit more, um, a bit more adjustability really. It's a bit too soft under braking and stuff like that. But generally it's soaked up all the bumps on the country roads really well. Um, braking system, as I said, it, the calipers are by Brembo and it does have a Bosch ABS system, which works very well. I haven't had any, um, any problems with it. The rear is, kicked in a few times when I was you know, really jumping on the brakes, but otherwise it's uh, been great. Styling wise, I think what's not to like, I think it looks great. I love the whole one piece design where the, the tank cover flows into the seat. The rear light as well is very cool. Not too keen on this number plate holder, but yeah, the, the owner as well, Chris said he doesn't like that either. So this particular bike has got a Kaufman's slip-on exhaust fit, and it sounds perfect. It's still got the baffle in, but I think um, it's just, just about right. Not too noisy and not too quiet. So ergonomically speaking, it's, this one has got clip-ons as opposed to the uh, Svart pillin, which is more like a upright bar. And to be honest, I got a bit of wrist ache um, there's a few things that kind of annoy me about it is the throttle is just this way too much of it So if, if you're just holding say you're holding in the throttle in normal position to go full throttle you really have to Get the angle on obviously you can change your hand so you start the throttle from here So you can go wide open throttle and your hands are already on the brake Which is probably the better thing to do, but just cruising around town. I felt like it was a bit a bit too much weight on the front for me but yeah, that, that's just me. If you're a smaller guy, like the owner is, then maybe you have no problems at all. But design as well is so cool, you know. Lovely little, lovely little features like this. Husqvarna machine into the fuel cap. Same here on the top yokes. Vip Pillins machine into it, it looks great. The actual dash as well is good. The only thing I found that I didn't realize at first is this light here is the shift light. So I didn't really realize what was going on because I saw it revs to 13,000 RPM, but about 8,000, this light starts flashing and flashing and flashing. So that freaked me out thinking there was something wrong with the bike, but that is a shift light apparently. So the headlight as well, very nice design. It's pretty cool looking. The fender as well, I really love the front fender. It's a, you know, a one-piece plastic fender, but it's got a real cafe racer style to it. The whole bike screams cafe racer. To be honest, when you ride it as well, you feel cool. You feel like you are on some old Norton or something. So yeah, that, that really helps with it. And the wheels, of course, this one doesn't have aluminium spoked wheels. I mean, forged wheels, it's got spoked wheels. 
So that's a very nice design feature. Probably good for strength as well if you're going over bumps and stuff. Swing arm design as well, beautiful I reckon. Typical KTM, it looks really good. So yeah, overall, I really, really like the bike. So let's get on to the ride review. So the early bird catches the worm, as they say. However, I was too early for the cafe. Anyway, we're gonna go and hit some twisty roads today, so whatever, we'll get a coffee on the, on the way. All right, one of the interesting things, or nice things about this bike is, is maybe you can see, but the, uh, the controls are all illuminated. So all the inside the switches are all little LEDs. Another interesting thing that I didn't realize at first is the starter, you don't have to hold it down until it starts. You'd literally just push it once. I'll do it now quickly. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like a, a one touch thing. You don't have to hold it down until it starts. I don't know why it didn't start just then. Maybe it's a bit, a bit too hot. Anyway, we've got to battle the downtown traffic now. I thought today, you know, I left super early today, so I figured there'd be no traffic, but there is a ton of traffic. However, that is a good way for me to illustrate what this bike is like around town and when filtering, etc. So, as I uh, normally would hate it, now I'm excited to look forward to a traffic jam so I can show you how good it is. <laughs> All right, so not really a traffic jam, but we've got a bit of traffic today. So what's the old girl like at filtering then? Mirrors are not too wide. Well, that was too easy, wasn't it? That was too easy. Let's make it a bit harder on ourselves. So yeah, absolutely no problems filtering. Very light and nimble and not too, too big or wide. And then, when you want to pull away, plenty of punch in first and second. So yeah, I, I would say, in my humble opinion, it would make a great bike. And in the sense of it being a cafe racer, I'm sure it would be absolutely perfect at doing a Starbucks run. As long as you get there after it's opened, unlike me. So what is it like on the highway? So far so good. Uh, it's fairly busy today, but I'm cruising at around 100 kilometers an hour, which is 60 miles an hour. And it's, I don't know, I'm in sixth gear and I'm doing 6,000 RPM. So yeah, actually the speed is a bit higher than I said, like 110 kilometers an hour is 6,000 RPM. So it's not too bad, like it's not uh, vibing away underneath me or anything. It doesn't feel like it's going to shake itself apart at constant high speeds. So yeah, I'd say it's good and like um, the, just the flickability of it, you can just, you know, you can just change lanes so easily. Overtake cars, no problem. The top speed is around, it's basically 100 miles an hour top speed. So it's not, it's not ludicrously fast or, or slow. This bike sort of gives me that feeling of like it's not too fast, it's not too slow, uh, it's not too light, it's not too heavy. It's sort of like a perfect mix of everything. So I'm really enjoying it so far. And now, now it's dark in the tunnel. Hopefully you can see those illuminated uh, switch gear that I was telling you about. So yeah, that's a nice little feature. Uh, a car that won't get out of the way. I guess this white van's getting impatient. Are you going to undertake him or shall I? Okay, I will. Dickhead! Alright guys, so I finally made it onto a nice road. It's a little bit bumpy and lots of condition, uh, surface changes and stuff like that. And that is, I think, where I'm feeling a bit like the suspension needs a bit more damping. And obviously, you know, if you're going to ride really hard, then you need adjustable suspension anyway, like at least to be able to set up preload, for, you know, for your weight. So as I said, I'm 90 kilos. So this bike is totally underdamped for me, totally unsprung as well. So 
Yeah, I guess if you're a real serious guy and you're going to go carving up the canyons on it, then adjustable suspension is a must. Um, but in general, it feels very nice. It's not, it's not like ridiculously soft or ridiculously underdamped, and you know you can you can really push push on. I don't know what speeds I'm doing, so I'm looking at the road. But uh, you know, reasonably quick speeds, and it and it feels quite planted. Change of direction is great. I mean, this is a light bike. It weighs 151 kilos without fuel. I guess that means with fluids except fuel. They don't say wet and dry weight. They just said without fuel in the catalogue. So yeah, 151 kilos. It's light. And I think I said before about how um, I can see how RC390s are so popular. I mean, this thing, the engine just feels like a racer. If anyone's had a single, a single before, like a, a DRZ or a, a KTM or something, they, this feels just, it feels quick. And it's so, um, so nice, the, the matching to the, the gearbox, like the gear ratios and the engine revs, it's just real nice. You can, uh, first gear is kind of a bit useless, I think. And the clutch, feel, the feeling in the clutch is very, very soft. It's a really lightweight clutch and i can never quite get it get the biting point right when i'm at traffic lights or i'm in first gear you know starting from a stop it always feels a bit clumsy but basically you don't need to use the clutch again after that just quickly use the clutch for first and then as soon as you can get it into second because there's enough punch in second to not not even bother with first but anyway i think um that because this bike is so low the su size wise i'm guessing that you're not going to be able to see a lot from my helmet camera so i'm going to stop in a minute and switch to my chest cam and put my external mic on so you can hear what this bike sounds like and see it in proper pov styly so stick around and i'll get my chest rig out Alright guys, so I'm just heading over to back to Chris's house now to drop the bike back off. So a big thanks to you Chris for lending me your bike, it was great. Thank you for letting me cook your ride. Yeah, had to get that in there. So what are my final thoughts on the bike? Uh, so I'll start with the negatives. The negatives are I had a couple of issues with the gearbox. Um, which you'll probably notice if you watch my um, raw sound video. I can't remember at what point, but at some point I had a, a false neutral mid corner, which was kind of upsetting to the balance of the bike and also to my confidence in the bike. And I had another issue as well where I, again, mid corner, where I was in second gear in the corner entry and thought, ah, I'm going a uh, reasonable enough pace, I can use third here. So I flicked it into third and then just when I was in right in the middle of the corner, leaning the bike over, all of a sudden it went back into second and threw the bike into a massive wobble, like the, the rear almost locked up and, you know, again, it totally upset the balance of the bike. So that happened actually, I would say four times throughout the day. So not, not loads of times, but enough to make me think it's a problem. 
Um, but apparently the, the newer models address that with a quick shifter and some other things. So the other thing I would say is the suspension. I'm obviously a big guy, 190 centimeters and 90 kilos. So most bikes are not set up for me anyway, but I felt that um, the compression was too fast and the rebound was too too fast and just basically un, under sprung as well. So definitely um, the suspension needs addressing. But again, that later models that I think the 2020 model, so this year's model, had better suspension and quick shifter and all the other other little issues fixed so yeah i guess this particular model being a 2018 2019 model uh is lacking in those areas so they're the only two negatives really i found the suspension to be a bit too soft and the compression was way too fast um positives the rest the rest are all positive let's say i'm 10% negative, 90% positive. I absolutely loved riding this bike. Uh, for for Japan, it, I would say it's perfect. You know, the, the size of it, the gearing, the amount of power it's ha it has, the speed, it, it's absolutely perfect for Japan. But for another country, you know, if you're in the States or England or Europe where the roads are faster and you're more likely to go on bigger trips and stuff, then, <coughs> excuse me, then yeah, maybe not. Um, but yeah, Japan is pretty slow riding here and the roads are all narrow and twisty and stuff. So for here, it's absolutely perfect. And I would say as well, maybe perfect for someone who wants to have uh, a commuter or even a, a second bike as like a track day toy or something. It would be a perfect bike to learn on or to, you know, keep your skills up because there's something really pure about this bike. Um, it has ABS, but aside from that, nothing else. So it feels old school. <coughs> oh, fuck, hope I haven't caught the Corona Chan. Uh, yeah, so like I was saying, it just feels so good. That as soon as you get on it, you know you're on a cafe racer style bike. The riding position where your feet are on the pegs, the way you're, you're, the angle of your wrists and your body, you're like sat basically above, you're in, almost in front of the tank. So you just feel really cool when you're riding it. It just feels, it feels great. So yeah, all positive basically. I think it would be a fantastic bike for anyone who's maybe uh, got, maybe it's the first bike or you're on that A2 license in England so you can, uh, can't have such a big bike. It's just a great, the engine response is nice. Oh shit, I've missed his entrance getting in here so yeah like um the, the engine it just feels great it's a, a nice sing, nice single cylinder engine it feels so responsive because you know you're um you're just instantly connected to that to that single now it's only a, a 373 cc so it's pretty small but it feels ample enough and i'm not one of those people who thinks like oh if it's not got a thousand cc it's not cool you know like as long as it's got an engine and two wheels i pretty much like it Oh, there he is. Oh, I've got to go around this way. <laughs> oh, get him on video. Get him on video. So, yeah, I loved it. What's up? How you doing? Good. I've never actually seen it being ridden before. I bet it looks <laughs> tiny with me on it. <laughs> it's like a toy, yeah. I was just giving my final thoughts on the way back. Oh, right, it's still going. Yeah. So, thank you very much. Boom! <coughs> I think I'm dying of Corona.